I want to announce a new tour date. November 3rd in San Diego at the Balboa Theater. We'll be heading down there with the Return of the Rat Tour. The uh, Patreon presale starts today at 2 p.m. Um, the artist presale starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's September 7th with the code RATKING. And the general on sale will be Friday, September 9th at 10 a.m. And they're available to everyone then with no code. As well, we have October 11th and 12th in Wichita, Kansas. October 13th, Omaha, Nebraska. And October 14th, Denver, Colorado. Both those shows are sold out. But we will be adding uh, new Denver dates and some other Colorado dates um, in the earliest part of the year. It's looking like January. You can go to theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R, uh, for those tickets, for all tickets. Thank you for your support. I'm excited to announce that we've got the new Rat King Racing Collection hitting the store today. If you like being in a vehicle, if you like driving or uh, yielding, using your blinker, going fast, using gasoline, if you like all of that, automobilery, you'll love it. It's at theovonstore.com, the Rat King Racing Collection shirts, hoodies, hats. Get that hitter, baby, gang. Today's guest is, um, he's that racer baby. He's that skirt boy. You know what I'm saying? He likes being on wheels. He's been an IndyCar driver for 25 years. Uh, he's won the Indy 500. Um, he's from Brazil. He's from another country. But he's put a lot of miles on America, that's for sure. Um, his team took me out earlier today in an Indy car, and man, I hit a couple hundred. I, I hit a couple hundred miles. I hit a damn mock or a couple mocks. I don't know what I hit. I mean, I was fat. There's still people looking for me. So that's how fast we went. Uh, I'm grateful to have him here today to learn about his life and to learn about racing. Today's guest is Mr. Tony Kanata. Yeah, man. If I, so if I seem flustered, I, uh, the pool, you know, which immediately tells people that I'm making money. Right. Um, the pool, something broke and it, the, it, the water's flowing into the backyard right now. You know, that's, that's what I tell my kids and my wife at home, because obviously we work hard, we make money, but if we didn't have a pool, we wouldn't have that problem. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like I was traveling to a race, um, we, we live in Indianapolis, and okay. I have four kids. Oh, wow. Uh, they, all, they all go to the races with me when they can. So I have, obviously, a smart home with all the security because, you know, you have to have it. And uh, we, I turn the alarm on, and I can see anything that happens. I can see it on my, on my phone. And going down the road, driving to one of the races, uh, my phone starts to go nuts and give, gives me different alarms that, you know, the, light, the bathroom lights on or I'm like it's somebody's in the house and I'm looking in the camera and I can't see it and I can't see it but we're not too far off I said you know what we need to turn around and see what's going on we had nobody there so I turned yeah, around came mystery. home but first you get home you're like I don't know how to fight I don't have yeah. a gun I'm like if somebody's here but I also don't want to call the police to look like the fool they're like hey so I go in there is nothing going on I'm like what's what's wrong and the phone's going crazy then I start Try to turn the light on to check. Doesn't turn on. So I'm like, something's happening. Are we going to catch fire anyway? To make a story short, because you talk about your basement. I have, it's a smart home, and all the equipment is in the basement in a room with air conditioning because they say it needs to keep it cool, like, you know, like we do it in the studio. And it's positioned in a room specifically made, but there is one pipe, one single pipe that goes through that was actually, they put the rack with all the equipment underneath. Oh. And it was the sewer pipe. No, so it's it dripping? And it was broken. Damn. So it leaked, it burned the entire system, so the house wasn't working, but also it's the sewer pipe. Right. So you can imagine. And not, your it, fine, not your finest pipe, yeah. And and it was floating. By the time I got back, it was at least 40 minutes between, and then it flowed the, 
the basement with no that clean water. Wow. So, so who had to go in there? Well, I was in there. As soon as I saw that, I'm not very good at I was I almost barfed. Yeah. I told my wife, look, damage is done. Nobody's going down there. And I still had to drive. I mean, we're like, I have to go to a race. Right. So I called uh, a couple of the contractors, the guy that built my house, and they helped me out. And they, they sent people there. We fixed the pipe and had to call the insurance company because that we had to change everything. The whole carp. I mean, everything was. Oh. So, yeah. Is that probably the worst thing that's happened to you as a homeowner, you think? No. I, uh, I lived in Miami for 22 years, and I used to collect watches, like expensive watches and stuff, but never really had them in a safe or anything. I had probably 35 expensive watches, not insured. No. And But you do interviews, you talk about things yeah. you like, you know, you have cars, you have this, and it's not a brag, but people are like, oh, so I know you like watches. So then I actually had just given an interview to a, a, a watch guy, and I got home and they're all gone. A couple Did million you, bucks. So. Really? A couple million bucks worth? Yeah, some expensive. Ones. Like if people don't understand about watches, but a Rolex Ponium, which is very rare. Like, yeah, all, all. I actually got left with the watch that I was wearing, which is always my workout watch, which was the cheapest one. Oh. Damn, isn't that crazy how you'll get something nice for yourself and then you just kind of lock it away? You know, Theo, that's something that I, I, I hopefully, I mean, hopefully it didn't happen to you, but you feel so violated, right? So you work so hard. I mean, I'm, I don't come from a rich family. I mean, everything I've done, I really worked hard. I gave up a lot of things to, to do it. Never with the intention to make money. I mean, to be rich. I've never yeah. said, oh, I want to be a race car driver because I want to be rich. I just want to race. But then you like nice things, you make money, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody just come and takes it from you you know yeah that must have been really disheartening did you um it, it was so bad that actually to this day i probably have five watches now you know i love watches and i bought the my top five because then you go you don't need all of it you don't you really like looks like you know people can take you the wrong way too when you brag well i had 40 watches like, yeah i just liked them i didn't you know it wasn't like oh i have yeah, how much brag. time you need yeah here you know yeah. you have one well, you have two wrists, but you're only supposed to wear one watch at a time. Yeah. So it's not like, so I bought my favorite five watches and, and that's it. I would never bought it, never bought it again. Now I have a safe, then you insure them and so on. But it's, it almost ruined your love for them a little bit that right. somebody, you it just sold go, them. that's it. And, yeah. it. and it did go away. Like, you know, on that particular, like, I don't know, whatever you want to call, like pleasure that I have of collecting that is, it's been gone ever since it's been 12 years now, but yeah, yeah, I, I could have, thank God, I could have bought all of them back or some of them. I'm right. like, nah, I don't want that. And did you call a detective or anything like that? So we did, but like like I said, they were not insured. Some of the watches, I mean, I had listed, so they say, well, if this watch comes to service at Rolex or whatever, we can probably catch it. If not, they're going to be gone. So we put, we think it's so hard because when you do an interview, look how many millions of people are watching us, right? Yeah. And then I could say something. And nowadays you can Google anything. Our lives. Yes. Yeah, because we live on a social media environment. They know when you're gone. Yeah. Right? As soon as you post, hey, I'm, I'm going to LA. I'm shooting in LA today. Whoever knows that where you live, they Damn, can assume you're really not in scared. your home. Well, if they come, I hope they don't come to swim. I'll tell right. them that. Because <laughs> you know, there but is, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. And that's my biggest fear, especially coming from Brazil, which is, it's a third world country. And is we, it? Yes. It's it's quite, you know, it's it's not as wealthy as right. as, uh, as America. Uh, um, you have a lot of those kind of things. And my biggest fear is like, when people know I'm gone, my family's at home. And oh, they know wow. my wife is alone. So- and you in, try to protect yourself. You know? And in Brazil, do they have a lot of kidnappings and stuff like Big that? Big time. I mean, I when I go down there, which I do a lot, um, I still have family there. My oldest kid still lives there. I'm racing there this year. I have a bulletproof car. Wow. Uh, and I have two bodyguards that follow me on another car. And talk about not having any privacy. Because if you try not to catch, catch attention, you know that well enough. You shouldn't walk around with four people right. looking like, 
you know, like a wardrobe behind yeah, you. Like double O C like or whatever. Yeah, and then every time you stop somewhere, they go in first, check it out, and then you come out and people are like, Well, who's that? Right. But a lot of people do that, which is it takes your privacy away, it takes a lot of things away. And I'm always worried about my mom. My mom is seventy four and well, it's interesting because it's almost like, you know, you achieve some of your dreams and your goals and then you have to even if you want to be anonymous, you almost can't be just for your own safety. Right, but then when you talk about kidnapping, they're not going to come for me, right? They're right. going to come to my kids, right. to my mom, to my sister, because they want me to probably pay for it. Yeah, if they call, if they kidnap you, they can't call you. They, yeah, they can call me, and then I say, guys, if I don't yeah, make a call to me. get you the money, who's going to get you yeah. the money? Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Unless the, they're the worst <laughs> kidnappers right. ever. And I said, if they, if they call my wife, she might pay them <laughs> to keep me for a few extra months. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. And um, and in Brazil, is it a, I guess like, well, tell me about that bulletproof car. So that thing is like. Dude, it's the ama most amazing thing you'll see. Damn, I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I raced down there for Toyota, so it's a Corolla, but they add another, I don't know. Nowadays, it's very, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but very, uh, the ballistic stuff that you put in the car, the metals and stuff, it's so light that it's only like 100 pounds more that you add to the car. But mm. it goes inside the door, the column, all, every single glass. You can't break, like you could sit in your car and flip anybody off. And if you're yeah. locked in, they cannot yeah. get in. <laughs> like you'd just be like, whatever, you know? But which is, it's not funny, but like they they still, like an iPhone, just to give you an, an example, an uh -huh. iPhone down there, just think about currency. You have to think about one to one. If I say, because the dollar there, it's five to one. Okay, right? so yeah, so one dollar it's five of our currency. Okay, but got it. Let's pretend you live there. So if you make ten grand, you're making ten, whatever. Right, right. So an iPhone there, it's fifty grand. Fifty grand in uh, in reals, reals, which, reals, but you have to think that if 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 you live there, you're making fifty grand of something. Right. So, but I'm telling. So and then the the minimum wage, it's two thousand. So wow, think so you about have to this. work for a hundred years to make an iPhone. Not a hundred years, but like a ten years, right? Yeah, it's, it's, ten, sorry, yeah. yeah. So you walk in, you walking down the street, talking know. on your iPhone. Yeah, wow. Somebody takes it, and then they make two grand a month. They can sell it. Okay, it's stolen, but for forty, that's almost two years of of work. So they take it. But you're in a, in a bulletproof car. They 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 try to actually they actually try to break the window, and then yeah. you just. Flip them off. It's <laughs> not getting that one. You keep on knocking, but well, you can't which come is not in. Funny. Remember that? I mean, you know how it's miserable to live a life yeah. like that. Oh, but. yeah. You're just like this big game of hide and go seek, and it's only because you achieved some of your dreams or you had some success. Right. You know, I actually went to one time um, Salvador. Salvador, that's where I'm from. Really? Yeah, that's where I was born. Dude, I got mugged by Here go. a, uh, I mean, it was all, it's beautiful, but also I got mugged Theo, it's, it's, um, by a woman there, dude. And I never fought a woman before. What did she take? She, I had uh, some of my money and uh, just belongings in my front pockets, right? So she put one of her hands in my pocket. So I grabbed her wrist and held it against my side. So locked her hand in my pocket. But then now she and I each had to start, you know, I never, I didn't know she was a woman at first, so I was just Doesn't ready matter. to defend myself. And then we, we, we each punched each other a decent amount. But man. guys, look at, look, can you imagine Theo? Like, does he look like a Brazilian walking down the street in Brazil now? No. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't look like Pele. That's I look a like shame, Pele man. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know. No, it was, a, I thought, look, it was awesome. And it kind of was like, <laughs> And I hadn't had any coffee, so it was like free coffee. I mean, that'll get you going. Oh, it gets your adrenaline up. But yeah. it was also, you know, I mean, I think it, some of that stuff is just, it's not a frown on the society. It's just part of, you know, some cultures, they're, you know, they're not doing as well. And I remember there was a kid who said he would bite me and that he was infected, that he had HIV, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just like a scam, you know? And I was like, well, I probably, I might have something, you know? So Dude, I'll bite I mean, you. And then uh, I think I just gave him a couple dollars, <laughs> but I actually, I admired his ingenuity a little bit, you know, but that freaking, you know, that the, dirty it, Dracula I mean, That's vibe. desperation, right? You think about- Oh, yeah. Like, it's just like being in the jungle, right? You're like, well, it's not fair that the lion's going to eat the little elephant, but he needs to do that to survive. And that's basically, unfortunately, it's what with like, you know, when your family is starving and you can't make ends meet and you're making less than a thousand bucks a month and it- 
cost you five grand to live. Yeah. People do desperate things. And, oh. You know, it's a shame. It's really a shame. Yeah. And then it becomes a culture because then it starts like that, but then people go, oh, that's easy. Right. Right? Yeah, I'll I do mean, it. Why, why am I going to work nine hours a day to make $2,000 if I can steal a phone and make it 40 Right. In 30 seconds. And then you have weird things where it's like, okay, if I have one kid and he's out threatening to bite people and making money, why don't I have five kids right. and have a little nibbling family and out there? And then it becomes a, like, you know. Yeah, like a, a, full, a, like a chorus almost. Like a cor- right. Like right. just like, you know, they're just out there just snacking on people. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of that is just, it happens with poverty. Even in poverty, people have to find a way to survive. So Correct. the, and then when you're, when you're poor, your enemy Cause my enemy always growing up was rich people. Mm-hmm. I fucking hated rich people, dude. <laughs> you know, and for no reason except that they were it's because rich. they had more money yeah, than us. <laughs> and you kind of have to have an enemy, and right. you know, especially when you don't have anything, you got to have an enemy. You know, you know, it's a motivation. I take it as a yes, motivation. Right? That's what it like, is. You're like you know what? It's not. I'll an show enemy. you. It's, yes. You think you're rich? Yeah. It's a motivation, yeah. man. Like I remember the first time I went to somebody's house and they had a dog in the in inside. And it blew my mind. It was like inside dog. What, what, I'd never what, seen it. I thought it was like a myth. Of, you know, <laughs> it seemed like something out of the Bible. You know, I remember being by my buddy Scott's house. You know, house. dogs do acupuncture now. You know that? They have masseuse. Do you know that? Do they? Yeah, man. See, wow. you're going to hate them even more. Not the dogs, but. Bring up that dog acupuncture, please. <laughs> Let's get a peek at it. I want to see what you're talking about. Because i never seen an animal shoot up. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, come on. See? Some of this seems mildly satanic. They have migraines. Huh? That's what they say. I don't know. I have migraines. I do acupuncture, but. Yeah? How does your dog tell you he, you have a migraine, you know? I don't know. Somebody tells you that, right? <laughs> yeah, somebody tells you. <laughs> right, and yeah, you believe the, it. Yeah, the dog isn't saying <laughs> it. Yeah, the dog. This seems like a little voodoo dog right there, that one. <laughs> wow. Hey, can you bring up an article on it, please? Do you mind, bub? dog acupuncture yeah when i was young they didn't have dogs didn't do acupuncture i think that you know, like they say that they have arthritis like you know like some stuff like that but they got four legs man if you got four legs you're gonna get arthritis bro <laughs> if you don't think you're getting arthritis and you on four Correct. legs then that's your fault into the dog's body at specific points where nerves and blood vessels converge. These points are located in sites called meridians. Just like human, huh? Just like human acupuncture. But that's what I'm saying, though. But we can go to an acupuncture guy or doctor, whatever you call, say, I'm having a headache. How do you know your dog does? Yeah. You woke up in the morning and said, let me take the dog to the vet (laughs) because she barked a little weird. It has a migraine on it. He had a long (laughs) night. Yeah, I think he could, yeah. That's crazy, bro. That's wild. And that's one of the side effects of having too much money in a Look, culture. Well, but also it's the side. I, I have dogs. I mean, I had dogs all my life. The kids love them. And then it becomes part of your family. So, right. And and you just will do whatever. Yeah, I whatever guess I would fits. never. I, I couldn't imagine a dog getting acupuncture. I think I don't know if it would. <laughs> I couldn't do it, I don't think, no matter what was going on with it. You right. know, even if I got a little note from it saying, hey, man, <laughs> I'd love, you know. <laughs> Some little, you know, a Chinese therapy or something. I'd say, I'd say no. I'd say no. But I remember, yeah, the first time I ever saw a golden retriever indoors, somebody's house. I've never seen a golden retriever before. And it came around the corner of my buddy Scott's house and it looked like it had just come out of the Bible, man. It was beautiful. God, it was beautiful. Um, In a, in a poor country is because NASCAR or racing in America is often synonymous with po- with poor people. Right. You know, and and I don't know why that is really. Uh, you know, I know a lo- when I was, you know, I was poor and a lot of people like cars. Poor people like, you know, getting a car. It's kind of, there's something cool about it. Because we people can't like have good too. cars, so we have to like cars because we have the crappiest cars. And you, you know? soup them They're up, They're always right? breaking it. Yeah. <laughs> people would be like, oh, I got, like I had a 90, 90, I had a 1984 Ford Escort and somebody stole the passenger seat out of it. So you had to get in the front and then just go sit in the back, you know? It's actually like a limousine, man. It was pretty nice, man. It wasn't too bad, but uh, 
It was weird though. You know, people would get in the front door and be like, well, where do I even go? And I'm like, well, fucking get in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, damn, Drive dude. like I'm your driver or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Football, it's back, baby. Pig skins, they're coming. You can hear all the pigs scared in their troughs. The first Sunday of the NFL season is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving new customers a can't-miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's right. And, and as an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings' early win promotion. Just bet on an NFL team to win. If your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THEO to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet this Sunday. That's code THEO, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Imagine having one extra day every week, more time to cook healthy meals, work on that novel, or just binge some good reality TV. Now it's all possible to have that time with ClickUp, the productivity platform that'll save you one day a week on work, guaranteed. ClickUp is the one tool to house all your tasks, projects, docs, goals, spreadsheets, and more. ClickUp is built for teams from 1 to 1,000. Whether you're in project management, engineering, sales, marketing, or HR, ClickUp has easy-to-use solutions that create a more efficient work environment. Use code THEO to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for a year, meaning you can start reclaiming your time for under $5 a month. Sign up today at ClickUp.com and use code THEO. Hurry, this offer ends soon. But is it a poor sport? Because you grew up in Brazil. So is it do, a, it, it's, what's it like there? It's, well, I mean, actually, it's funny how it, it's cool to hear a prospect of somebody that is not involved in racing because actually racing, it's a, a very, like, it's a rich people sport because you spend so much money. Like hmm. people that work in racing, I can argue that mechanics and engineers and even drivers, and, and especially in the lower levels. It's are, blue collar. No, it's people that, you know, sometimes don't have, a, but like to fund a kid to race go-karts nowadays, you're going to spend at least $200,000 a year. Wow. And in go-karts, you don't find a sponsor to, to get the return, right? I mean, nowadays, a little easier, but so Brazil is like, we have soccer, which is extremely popular. Yeah. Right, because it's very cheap. Oh, y'all are so good at soccer, we watch. Right, well, but all we need to play soccer is a soccer ball. Right. So anybody can have that. You can play anywhere. So in the favelas, which is like people live in this cartoon houses, boarded. Yeah. You can play anywhere. So we have the majority, 80% of the population play soccer. Play soccer. Mm. And then you have second, the second biggest sports racing because it become it became very popular back in the day, but it's very expensive. So it becomes a rich people. If you're rich, you go karting. If you don't have a lot of money, you're playing soccer. So I was very fortunate because my family wasn't rich, but we were not poor. Poor. Mm-hmm. We we're mid class. My dad worked really hard, so we. I started. I used to watch races with him on TV since I was. I mean, since I can remember. So like four years old, five years old, watching Formula One and IndyCar and some NASCAR wasn't very popular at the time. It was more open wheel. And uh, you go watch in person, you guys are watching? Yes, both. Wow. Right. So we do a, a father and son yeah. thing. And uh, so finally, when I was eight years old, I actually asked him for a go kart. So he bought me a go kart and started to kind of fund it. We didn't have the best equipment, but I was pretty good at it. Um, I won every championship I've ever raced since from, uh, from eight to 16. But what happened was when I was 10 years old, Dad got diagnosed with cancer, and he was really ill for like three years. And when I was thirteen, unfortunately, he passed. Mm. When he, with his passing, um, we basically lost everything. And in, into a year, my dad ran his business, but my mom, my mom always. Uh, my dad was from Lebanon, a very uh, 
me, like the mentality there was my my wife will take care of my kids. She'll right, never man work. Or the man or the, yeah, no, I and I get home, everybody needs to be ready. You're talking about traditional 40, 48 years ago, it's very traditional, but we need to wait it for him to have dinner. And my mom and we all sit on the table, very like so mom was my dad was forty two when he passed. Wow, it's so my young. mom was thirty six and never had work. So basically to make a little story short, um his business just went bad we we lost everything so i we basically went from mid class to like then we really like we had we didn't have a car uh we both we both went my sister and i we were in public uh, private schools we went to public but remember public schools there are not like public schools here if you go to public school it's because you can't afford it and and the the it's not good. The safety level falls off. Safety huh? level, um, but even the education, it's not as high. It's not as good because we. It's just a, like a product of, you know, the government that we have. But so then I had to go work. So I my my dad made him promise him that one day, the, the day before he passed, he called me up in the hospital, and we're sitting. He was actually very lucid. It wasn't like and going to a hospital. With him, I did it for three years in a row. So it was very, it wasn't a problem. He's like, hey, let's go sit down and have a chat. So he asked, actually, it was on a Thursday. He called my mom. I was at the racetrack. We usually, like race weekends are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Even for go-karting it was? Even for go-karting. So it was Thursday afternoon. I was at the track getting ready for Friday. And he asked my mom to tell me to stop by the hospital because he wanted to speak to me. So we sat down and I sat in his bed. He's talking obviously sick, cancer, you know, no hair, but not like, oh, he's dying or something. And he's like, hey, man, you know, uh, if anything ever happens to me, I, you need to promise me you, you need to take care of your mom and sister, but also you're never going to give up racing because really? you're really good at it. And I'm like, but he, he like, over the course of the three years, we had a lot of talks like that. I think he was trying to prepare me. I have a younger sister, so I was the oldest. I'm like, yeah, that. And he says, and one day, you need to win the Indy 500 for me because we used to watch that race. And to me as a kid, I mean, it has nothing to do with the win. With a, I remember that the winner will take a picture with a million dollars cash around the car. That for me was like, that's what I want. Wow. Like as a kid, you're like, whoa. Yeah. Right? It's like, dude, I want to have a freaking yeah. million dollars here. So he says, and I said, yeah, man, sure. But what are you talking about? Whatever. So I go home that night. I fall asleep. I wake up Friday morning to go to the track. My mom is at home. I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, well, your dad passed last night uh, in the middle of the night. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so I just came here to tell you. But before he passed, he asked me to remind you what you guys talked. Really? Yeah. So I was like, th- then she says, do you know? Do you know what it is? She, was, she wasn't there. I said, yeah, of course. She goes, okay. I said, well, I'm going to go to the racetrack. She goes, what? I said, well, that's what we talked. So... We, I did not go to his uh, services. I didn't think I, I didn't want to have the picture of my dad laying there. I think as a kid, he was going to daunt me for a long time. So Was that a personal choice or was that a part of your mother's choice? Because that seems like a strong no, mom, choice. No, mom was actually, because I said, I, I, well, I think the first thing was a promise that I made him because I had a race that weekend. So I said, I promise I'm going to keep racing. I can't miss a race. Right. So I went. But in the process, I think, I think I don't recall exactly because it was such a long time ago, but I think that probably led to maybe, I mean, the goodbye was the night before. It's not, he's not going to talk to me. Right. You know, I know people like to pay respects, but I mean, that's my choice. And your mother was okay with you making that choice? Yeah, because I, that was the, because I told her the promise I made him that I was going to go race. And I wow. won that race that wow. weekend. So that trophy from that day. Uh, April 8th, 1998, my mother still has it in her nightstand in her home. Oh, that's beautiful. So, and then from then on, basically it starts the poor kid. Living the that, promise, huh? Right, right. And Living then I had to promise. do whatever I had to do. But. Man, that's, um, it's interesting, man. Yeah, my father passed a cancer when I was 16 and, uh, and he was, um, he was 70 when I was born, so he was older. 
So even today, when I got to go over by you guys' track and ride around with uh, Mr. Andretti, who I think was 82. 82. Yeah, it's like, that reminded me of being a kid riding around with my dad. I mean, my dad went a little slower, <laughs> but that was, you know, that was the- If Mario he, hears you, he'll kill you. When I was- <laughs> Yeah, when I was ten, when I was twelve years old, my dad was eighty two, and we go drive. And then when he, when I was thirteen, he let me drive. When I was tall enough, he let me drive, and he would just sleep and stuff while I was driving, which was insane because I didn't know, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've never done anything like NASCAR, but uh, that was the closest I ever came was just driving a senior citizen around. Um, but that was a little bit of a similar experience that I had out there today. Um, so the the prominence of racing is that big in Brazil? It's big. Obviously, it could be bigger, but it's so expensive that it's not. But like a kid that is born in Brazil and obviously follows sports, either they want to be a soccer player or a race car driver. And well, it's either it's easier there for wealthier kids to get into. It's like the in racing, you have if you have twenty kids, one will be that has no money. Everything, everybody else has a parent or somebody that is paying a hell lot of money to, for them to start. Wow. And only becomes more expensive, right? So yeah. when I looked, because I mean, when I look what my mother did for me after my dad passed, because like I said, we're mid-class. I mean, dad was responsible, so we had some savings. And my mother, to keep my dream and my promise to my dad alive, kept funding. That's right. why we ran out of money. Wow. And I told her that I have four kids now. And with all due respect to my kids, uh, if they want to follow a career, I wouldn't jeopardize because I have I had a sister that had to actually sacrifice for me as well. Wow. Right? I don't think I could do it to one of my kids because what about the other three? Okay, I have a little bit too many kids, I think, for that. But it was me and my sister, and I got all of it. Yeah. Spent all of it. And she's like, what about me? What about me? Was there favoritism? Is there like because you were the male as well? Was that not part at of all, man? And, and, and you know that's something that I I I joke about it. I said the yeah. day that I find that I you know finally I'm not around and I meet my dad again, he's gonna hear because it was a big responsibility <laughs> that he put it on me. Because until this day, my sister never said a word. Wow. I mean, they all knew the story, so I think it was more of dad's word putting the responsibility on me and on them to sacrifice for me for a dream that we had him and right. I. they had nothing to do with it wow so that must have felt like an added pressure huh but theo yeah because but, but because then you think about it after a year year and a half we lose everything then i actually quit school i i stopped i was in ninth grade because i had to go to work for pretty real. high <laughs> you know, so I had to stop. She obviously graduated. She's extremely successful now, but it becomes that I started working on the go-kart factory to be able to have money to pay for our bills and also had the equipment to keep racing go-kart. So oh, it was it was a good, good situation. But, but then since then, well, not my sister anymore, but I still take care of my mom. Yeah. She's still my responsibility. Mm. So all of a sudden, a 15-year-old, had two daughters. I didn't have my mom. Oh, anymore. interesting. Right? right. My mom was 38, trying to find a job anywhere, even here. A 38 year old woman that never worked in her life, trying to find a job that you can actually maintain two kids. And, you know, it's hard. Nobody would give her a job. So, yes, yeah, tough. I finally had a good friend that owned five nightclubs in Brazil. And nightclubs, I mean, it's a mess, right? So they always worry about people stealing from the cashier because they deal with a lot of cash. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, I used hey. to work at one I stole. <laughs> so she, he was like, hey, man, I need somebody to take care of all the cashiers and somebody that I trust. And he knew my mother would never. So basically, my mom was to go to work at 11 at night and come back when they close the nightclubs, which in Brazil, it's 5 a.m. It ain't 2.30 in the morning like some of the places here. Yeah. So we never really actually saw each other. Oh, wow. So right? just, just Yeah, she'll come home to sleep, and I'll be leaving to go to work, and my sister had to go to school. So, we so did that at for what 10 point do you get out of go-karts then? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, you've had, like, the penultimate of success, like, in America is kind of, I guess, the Indy 500. Right. You know, it's like, I'm sure it's a lot of you guys' dream. Right. So, how do you get from 
you know, go-karts, when do you make that transfer and how does that happen for a driver? Do you get called up? Is it a they, matter of sponsorship? They are they are all all the above. But my story was I had no money. I mean, but people knew my story. So you have a couple of friends that would help you out. You have a team that would but at the end of the day, you have to win races. That's the best way you can actually achieve success or move and get higher but and why did you win do you think at that point why were you winning honestly i i i'm i could sit here and say well you know i'm very talented i'm good in what i do which i believe that but i think at that point i had no choice i, I had to right i mean it got to a point that like people ask me what about if it didn't work so i never give myself that option it was going to work. Now, was I going to go to IndyCar and win the Indy 500? I didn't know that. But I said, this is what I know what to do, and then this is how I need to make a living. So it's going to work. So I think what made me good, it was like just whatever, man. I, I slip in a floor, on a mattress on a floor, in a race shop for three years. Wow. In my boss's office. I will get up and kick some ass in the racetrack. And I think... You can see that, like, like you know, when you, you can see when somebody, do you really want it that bad, man? I mean, I I left my country. I didn't speak when I came to America. I spoke zero English. That was back in 1996. Oh, I went to went Italy in a NASCAR first. NASCAR, then you should have <laughs> went in a NASCAR. <laughs> so, and I went to Italy first before I came here, and and it was just, I think, to be honest, when people actually, I, my my 14 year old just asked me that question because he's in the phase of trying to figure out what he wants to do. And kids nowadays have 3,000 options, right? Yeah. Um, and I said, I said, I think it was the no option, no choice. Interesting. Yeah, I can kind of relate to some of that. Like, even with stand-up comedy, I never felt like I was going to lose, really. Right. But but you, how many people said, go find a job, man. You think just, you're going to make people laugh all your life? You think, what about... You're not that funny, you know, like that is always, and there are people like, no, man, go ahead, you know? Yeah. Like that is always going to be, and nowadays it's even worse because everybody has an opinion and they can write about it, right? And you can yeah. get instant on. But yeah, I'm, I, I, I never thought anything. I said, I'm going to make this work. Because it's interesting. I, I thought maybe you would be a lot more intense when I met you, you know, because I, I don't have a concept of what really drivers are like. You know, the only, uh, race car i met tony stewart one time i did some commercials with him like He's many intense. years ago <laughs> yeah he was interesting he seen he kind of like was like kind of like uh he seemed like a little qu quiet and maybe crazy i don't know i couldn't tell he was an interesting dude where am i then you know right right, right. Was, so, just tell me i'm interested <laughs> to hear <laughs> i don't know what tony was like i saw him at the comedy club actually a couple years ago and i went up and said hey to him i'm trying to remember what he was like I can't, I, you know, I can't even remember that, that good. He kind of kept to himself a little bit and he had this blonde chick with him too, man, with some damn bombs. You know, on that's him. race car drivers. We always have hot chicks. Around yeah. Huh? Like it is, guys. huh? Yeah. They just something. But then know? we're so short. So every woman is a lot taller than us. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's why it, a lot of times you don't even know what driver the chick is with. Cause you just see right. the chick. Well, you know? Just look for the short guy <laughs> and you find it. Oh, look at her old son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's like, you know, oh. And then they're gonna um, go out there. Look, he's she's only with him because he's somebody because he can't he can't <laughs> date somebody that short. <laughs> and then uh and then I met Clint Boyer a few times who's kind of a who's a he's a buddy of he's mine. He's crazy, man. man. He's crazy. He's and crazy. he is sheerly crazy. Like you could see that he probably hadn't slept in maybe 17 or 18 years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like he's just got fucking, you know, his his stare is like 93 octane. Right, right. You know, he's got really He's got diesel in his fucking, you know, just in his damn, uh, in his gums. You can really feel it coming off of him. Um, so yeah, I was, I was like, I, I was. Do, what? My question is, what is it? Is it intensity? What does it t take to really make someone who can operate a vehicle at these speeds and be in that sort of atmosphere? Because uh, even just going today on the trial, you know, went around for a couple of laps or something, and it was. You know, it was just damn intense. You know, all my blood went to my back strap or whatever. And yeah, my, but, but you see, know, you, I was just full in the back, you know, <laughs> I felt like I just, you know, 
I don't know. I just felt Did like you get a boner was, like you said you would, though. dude. I got the opposite of a boner, man. <laughs> you know why? I'll tell you why. Because it gets tight, so you ain't getting a boner. I didn't want to spoil your uh, and I comment that. there, but yeah, I'll let you experience. But uh, no, man, I, I, I honestly think the biggest thing is you need to be able to convert lies. Like, like you need to divide what you can't live your life the way you race. Life's not a race, and and I. It, I'm saying that now because I got somebody brought that up to me eventually. Because when you grow up in in a competitive environment, that's the only thing you know, right? So anything is a competition. Oh, if, let's go down the stairs. I want to beat you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even. What is that for? If you're gonna beat me, what, doesn't matter. Let's go out. I, I know exactly. Well, where are we going out? Where are we going? To a bar in your buddy's bar in, okay, how long it takes? It's three miles. It's going to, it's like my entire life was like that. So I think you you met me in a, a very good, I would say a very good moment of my life that I'm more, that I'm calmer. I mean, I used to be a lot more intense. Now I probably know how to, separate that and say okay time to be intense it's when i put a helmet on but i can't carry that all the time right you know but just to give an example this morning i i drove from indy to here wow and four in the morning and somebody was trying to pass me in the highway and i just got the best out of me and so they're not passing me <laughs> start <laughs> 70 75 <laughs> i'm like dude come on give up and and but you know so I guess I don't know. Maybe it's funny that it, it's, it's. I like to hear people that meet me for the first time to hear their because you didn't know me at all, so yeah. you haven't followed me. No, know, I didn't. So which is a good thing. I'd seen I'd right? seen some pictures and of you, and that was and it. And we barely talked because we didn't want to. And and the same with me when they, I knew who you were, but I really didn't follow you all the time. When yeah. they said hey, you're coming on the show, I said, they said, "Oh, here's an example of the show." I said, "I don't want to watch it." Yeah. Because I know who you were, I know what you do as a combat. I said I don't, I don't want to watch it because I want to be there. I want to experience. Because I went, oh, you know, I watched that and I know what. I said I don't. Want, which was such a coincidence that you said that the first time we just met today. He says, don't mind if I don't speak to you right now. Yeah, the first thing we said to each other was. Don't I, said, talk. I, I, said, I actually don't want to speak to you either. I don't hate you or anything, but which is I didn't want to. Which is yeah, no, great it's good to hear that because. I'm actually very intense. Wow, but but it's nice that it doesn't come off all the time. Yeah, I yeah I was like, oh, this guy's really has a uh, just a fun personality. That's what I thought, and I thought because I've always thought is intensity the thing that these drivers need because um, we do it is we do. I mean, it, that is no way you're gonna strap your ass in a race car and go some of the tracks 240 miles an hour here. Okay, here's 200, but you have walls. You can't make a mistake. And not be intense. I mean, just the environment itself is going to bring the pressure. I mean, it's a performance sport. You win, you're good. Monday, you got to do it again. You're not good anymore because Sunday is past. Damn. And the next race you lose, you're bad. So, And that's just like that all the time. Would you say that you probably became pretty hard on – I noticed from my – people always tell me I'm extremely hard on myself. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you are? 100%. Were, yeah. I'm my worst enemy. Like, Yeah. Same. I suck. You know, like yeah. you suck, man. Even when I win, but that's that's the thing. And those are things that I'm telling the people that brought that up to me. I didn't really. Uh, I'm smart enough to realize. You win a race. Two hours later, I'm like, fuck. Well, yeah. Never yeah. do it again. <laughs> yeah, damn. You're never happy. You know, it's like, what the fuck, man? Where does that come from, man? I think we just, you know, it when when you're good at what you do, man, and and that's why we're good. I'm not. I'm not here bragging. I'm not here say, no. sitting here says I'm the best. But I think that's what no, makes you good because if you are happy, then then. Oh yeah, good job, man. That was a good show. Good job. I mean, no. What can I do better? Right. I want the race, but 
I, you know, yeah, I'll come off stage. But, I will be, people will, my group that is on the side will be like, man. Awesome. And you can see in their faces, they're literally waiting to tell me how great it was. And I'll be like, motherfucker. Do you know dude. I chew their asses because says, you guys only tell me that because I pay you. The day I stop paying you, I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's do this. I'm going to stop paying you for a month. You come to a race and you tell me the truth at the end. <laughs> you know, because it's yeah, like it's my friends, bro. Yeah. Awesome races. Shut up. Yeah. You're my friend. <laughs> yeah. You never go. Are you really going to say you come off stage and I'm one of your best buddies? You know what, Theo? You suck, man. I know. Th that joke was bad. <laughs> I was like, TK, you drove horrible. It's like, I wonder if I'd appreciate it, though, if one of my friends actually said, said, hey, but, man. But, you know, I actually, my mother is the best one because she does. Yeah. She's like, well, are you going to crash again? I'm like, <laughs> no. Well, the way you're driving. Like, but, but I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, same thing the other day. My wife actually dressed up the other day and says, how do I look? I said, not good. Yeah. yeah. She was like, what the fuck? I said, well, but let me explain to you. you I don't think, I, I'm not saying you don't look good. What you're wearing doesn't look good. It's not vulgar. It's just, I don't like it. You're, the pockets on your jeans are spread apart. It looks like you have your mom's butt. But So, and I said, I, and you should appreciate that. Yeah. Because I don't think you look good. And I think a lot of people don't think that you look, but they don't have the balls to tell you. And she actually says, I actually appreciate that. I said, well, well, then can you start telling me the truth as well? So I don't think in 15 years I look good all the time. I drove the best races of my life. I'm the best driver in the world. I haven't won a fucking race in three years. So you can't tell me I'm good. Maybe I am, but there's a lot of people better than me now. Man, yeah, I used to I used to date this girl and her she had the same butt as her dad. It's it's crazy. And it always, dude, it was so like it made it impossible sometimes for like I have a challenge with my wife, you know, like for sex, you know, because I'm every time because she her mom's you butt. You see her dad? Oh well it just I didn't <laughs> But her mom's, like her dad had a dis, she just had a distinctive looking butt. And uh, when I met her parents, I was like, oh my God. But see, but don't they say butt. that uh, you're, you're, this is going great, guys. Uh, don't you think, they say that you got to look at your mother in law to see how your life, your wife's going to look like, which I don't think it's true because you said, you know, oh, if yeah. I look at, I, I told my wife, you, you better not. Not on this one, yeah. So on I'm, this I'm going to get different. divorced and sleep. I am my God. <laughs> No, it's interesting though. Being hard, being hard on yourself is interesting. Do you think that you had that your whole life, or do you think it happened oh, after your father no. passed away? Do you think it was just built into you? Well, just granted, from eight, I started racing. I was eight, eight to thirteen, so it was five years. I think my dad was pretty hard on me, like he was just that type of person, uh, putting the pressure for me to be. You want to be a race car driver? You got to sleep early. You got to eat well, like. Typical, like, like the you got to be home for dinner, and so I really didn't do anything apart from racing wow. my entire life. I suck at anything else that you tell me to do. Um, so it was like, my, but but that's what he wanted it, and we can sit here and debate if if he was still alive, if would I resent him or not? Yeah, right, but. Because he's not, it was a choice that I made. Yeah. Right? Because you see that on top athletes all the time. I mean, you see in tennis players, like, your parents are the ones they will. Because at eight years old, I can't just, I didn't woke up and said, ah, I want to be a race car driver. He took me to the races, kind of induced me to. Same way I take my kids to do six different sports to see what they like the most. Yeah. And whatever they like, we're going to help him because I think it's healthy. But, yeah, uh, no, I think, yeah, I was always really like, I don't think ever I finish a race, even if I win in the races that I won, that I would tell myself, hey, good job. Yeah. Which which is kind of sad. Yeah. You know I, I mean? I've been, man, you are talking. I am listening to myself right now, you know? It, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's sad in a way, but I can't do it. I know. And you always think about next. Well, because you raised the bar, right? Well, then... And everybody's watching because people, everybody's watching you. Your job is much harder than mine because people have to laugh or clap. If I, if I crash, they actually, they clap because I come out of the car alive. I guess it's, it's a consolation. <laughs> like, like, da, 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 da. They feel bad for you. Hey, loser, go home. You made a few I don't million know. bucks. Your job, and... your job might be harder. 
Because people hate being in traffic, and that's what you're in, you know? So they hate me, so they hate me even more. So I drive a minivan with kids, in, and they hate minivans. I can tell you that. You see a minivan, they, you think it's an old lady with kids. Yeah. She's going to be on her phone. They just, whatever opportunity people have to pass a minivan, they will because they're like, I can't be behind this person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you get me driving a minivan that give people to run over their money. But then I have my kids and my wife, what are you doing? <laughs> I actually, this is the only time I know what I'm doing, so shut up. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is it. You know, I'm not going to, Dad, you can't play baseball. You can't, no, I can't. But this, I can. <laughs> so you guys shush it. <laughs> Once I park, yeah, I'm back to, right. yeah. I'm back to the loser that you guys think I am. I can't text. I can't talk on the phone. I can't play any games. I can't play basketball. Nothing. <laughs> but this is what I do. Man, you're like a cartoon character, dude. <laughs> we all deal with the Sunday scaries. You know those dreadful, nervous, can't sleep, impending doom of the workday tomorrow feeling. You get them right before Monday. And some people get them every day of the week now. That's why Sunday scaries CBD gummies were made. To defeat the crap that life throws at us. If you don't relax well, if you're a horrible sleeper, if you're good at staring at the ceiling and worrying, if you're looking for new ways to get better sleep, Sunday Scaries CBD gummies can help you decompress, clear your mind, and fall asleep so you can wake up a fully functioning human being. 2022 is all about self-love and taking better care of yourself. So whether you need to take the edge off, calm your racing mind, Sleep better or just chill. Sunday scary CBD gummies are the answer. Look, we all have the right to live scare free. Let me save you with my 25% discount. Visit sundayscaries.com and use my promo code THEO for your discount. That's promo code THEO for 25% off at sundayscaries.com. If you're like me and there's a foreign language that you regret not learning in school. I always want to learn Latin. I always want to learn hand language. I always want to learn all of it. Well, Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can finally cross learning that new language off your to-do list. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language, Jeepers in as little as three weeks. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. Podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Theo, that's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash T-H-E-O. For up to 55% off your subscription, Babbel, language for life. I uh, I used to see, I used to listen to this singer called Chimaya. You heard yeah, Chimaya, of course. Man. Yeah. It's my favorite. It had like love songs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, man. He is awesome. I met a fr a guy, a friend, this guy named Patricio, and he um he used to do racing actually too. And he's from Brazil and uh and he would always listen to it and like sing it like he liked like you know, slow dancing with the ladies. He's like a Brazilian soul, like the guy, the singer. He's, yeah. He passed away, but it was cool. Can you bring him up? Bring up T my do you know how to spell it? I don't know how to spell yeah, it. T I M Space M. A I A. Here we go. Oh yeah. Big dude, big voice, man. He's awesome. Yeah. Dang. I bet you think he had a lot of children, you think? Dude, uh, I don't know his like, but that guy, I don't think he ever, ever did a concert that he was not annihilated. That's why. <laughs> like, yeah. But like, I'm like, if I drink that much, I couldn't ever speak. Then the guy will sing. Like, I went, I knew him personally. I went really? to a few of his shows. An awesome dude. Wow. Fun, but typical rock star, you know? That's interesting that I brought him up. Yeah, that's the only, like, thing about Brazil I know except for him and soccer. Yep. 
Um, what else did I see the other day? Something about cars. Oh, they found a bunch of rats in cars. <laughs> Do you have that? Oh, here we go. Why so many cars have rats in them? They chew all your wires and stuff. Yeah, they sure do. For uh, so, but you know, you know what's funny. You know why? Like, they don't. They are not hungry that they want to eat the wires. It's they always go to the engine compartment because it's hot. Oh, so it's kind of cozy, and so and then they're there. So I guess they go. Oh, I might as well eat that wire. Yeah. To freak, fuck with them. Might as well have some <laughs> lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Increase in vermin in cars. Had doubled during the pandemic, I guess, because cars were sitting well, they're around. They're just parked. Yeah, you know. What kind of do they have any interesting vermin in um, Brazil? I don't know. We have a lot of rats. For they sure. do. Yeah, like it's, you know, I, I think. Oh, there they are. Because I used to sell hamsters. My first job when I was young, I used really? to sell hamsters and guinea pigs. Yeah. I um, tell my kids that. Yeah, it was pretty big business for a little bit, but. People started doing drugs, the guy that I worked for, and they <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> but um, what do you think, like, so when I was in that vehicle today, so I had the opportunity to go out there and ride, right? right. So what kind of car was I in? You were in an Indy car. In so an Indy car. It was a Dallara. That's the make. But okay. it's, a, it's a special made chassis for that. Uh, full carbon fiber, which is a comp composite that race cars are made. It's not like a NASCAR car or your street car. It's the carbon fiber. We have some pieces in our street cars, but it's a lot rigid. It's a lot safer, you know, because you crash your car, it goes like, you know, you can see the door like getting smashed. And right. Those cars, they have intrusion panels. So if you hit the wall, nothing comes in to hurt you. Uh, open wheel, which is you don't have fenders and you have an engine. Uh, we race for Honda, but which is around 700 horsepower. Oh yeah, I used to drive a um Corolla. Uh, I used to drive an Accord. Yeah, but they didn't have seven hundred horsepower. Yeah. It was a sedan. No, I don't think it did. <laughs> I think it had. I don't know what it had. It was four. We it had probably a hundred horsepower. Yeah, maybe hundred horsepower. 150. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what it had. It was okay though. It was but black. I didn't want a seven hundred horsepower in the street anyway. Yeah, it was. I mean, I like. But was, so basically, it was a spe yeah. So the Indy cars are specially made just for the track. You cannot drive them on the streets. You know, they're so low to the ground. Yeah, you saw it. So when uh. The craziest part that I that I noticed was so you're going, you're almost going, you're going so fast it feels like I felt like I was on a ride at like Disneyland. That's or something. what I tried to tell people. Like this is what is it like? I said, well, get on the craziest roller coaster you can think of and do 200 laps on it. That's, wow! And add heat and other. You said it. I mean, that's the only time we actually talked when you got out. You said, I can't imagine when I did that by myself if we had more people around. Yeah, it'd be very alarming. Yeah, 30, 33 more guys around. It would get exciting. So do you, do, over time, do you get like a feel for things? Like, is it become, because I noticed with stand-up comedy, like after a while right. being on stage, I get a feel for what's going on. Right. I get a feel for like, I can tell when this part of the crowd is enjoying something. I can tell when they're waiting for the next thing. You know, you start to just get like a, just an energy. Right. Is that something that grows over time with racing? Like, is it like, what is that like to? Well, the feel that you get, obviously you're feeling people. We are feeling a race car. And with the experience of been doing indie cars for 23 years, 24 years. Okay. I used to say, you feel it in your butt. So basically, you go out, and the way that the car behaves, because you're sitting so close to the floor, to the ground, um, you can tell. You can tell when somebody, that you're making changes all the time. You're fine-tuning things. It's so complicated. Engineers have an idea. You don't agree, or you agree, and it's always like a very, you know, the engineer's trying to tell, well, but the computer is telling me this. I'm not the computer. I'm your computer. You need to listen to me. So you feel it in your butt. So you can tell. They change something. You go out in three corners. You can say, this is going to be awesome. Or this is, oh, this sucks. But sometimes you can do think, things about it. And sometimes you can't. But that, but then it's very, it's it screws with your mind. Because we have so much resources that you're always looking uh. to improve. So you're never happy. Right. 
So he said, Tony, so you just dominated the race. You won, kicked everybody's butt. How was the car? That was okay. What do you mean? It was the best car out there. Well, but that doesn't mean I liked it. Right. And 90% of the times, you actually, it's, I'll give you a like, stupid example. It's, you're telling jokes that people think it's funny, but you think it's stupid. I'm driving cars that I it's cool to drive, but I hate the way they drive, but they're fast and I have to drive it that way because I'm still better than them. Mm. So it's very, so you feel it in your butt, basically. So you sat there yeah. and you turn and right. the car will, do, will, will behave. So that's, that's what I say, feel it in your butt. So okay. then you, and then you describe that to a person that is sitting in front of a computer and then we both say, okay, so for this behavior, you can do this. For that behavior, you can do that. I don't want to get technical because then right. people would just don't understand what we're talking about. But that's basically, we have a fix for everything, but doesn't mean it's really fixed. But you always, but then there's a fine line as well because what's, what's your gauge? It's your stopwatch. You make a change, you go quicker, it's better. You make a change, you go slower, it's worse. Not necessarily. Sometimes you make two changes that are worse, but then then you're trying to put a piece of the puzzle together to be better. Interesting. So, and, and so you're making choices constantly, but you have to be so confident that the choices you're making, you can't second out yourself. And that's a big... So that's what I think also race car drivers become extremely confident. Are they? Are a lot of race car drivers, do they have to be like... Are they angry people? Are they a lot of them like uh, driven? No, I think are we're they... more of adrenaline people than really? angry. I mean, you can't adrenaline. like driving angry sometimes doesn't mean you're going fast. Actually, it's probably sometimes it's worse. You make more mistakes because then you're doing things that you're not thinking. Yeah. Because when you're angry, your level oh, of yeah. thinking it's a lot less. So you actually, the calmer guys. I mean, I have a teammate, Scott Dixon. It's they call him the Ice Man because you, the guy is just flat. And he's the fastest person, but because he thinks, you know, you're not mad. You're like, okay, this is how I'm gonna get sneaky, you know, in a good way. But are so. some cultures like are some cultures better at racing than other cultures? Do you think it's just built I, into I, people? I don't know. I mean, I obviously I'm not American. I became American a few years back. My entire family was born here, my kids, but I think we have Goods and bads, like everything. I mean, we, you know, like me, I'll give an example. As a Brazilian, I had to fight for what I wanted. So I'm, I actually perform well in a pressure, in a bad situation, because probably I'm being in bad situations a lot more than I'm being in good ones. Okay. So I'm really good at managing that. Right. I'm not really good managing when everything is right. Every, when everything is right, so what, what's going to go wrong? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not used to that. It's like, too good to be true. I can't, this can't, this can't be right. Totally, and okay. of course, what's a sh what what's a shittier situation than a bunch of people going really fucking right, fast? Right, but I think it makes a difference when a race car driver you went you you constant making choices, right or wrong, you have one second to make that choice, and I think guys that brought up in the hard way, we can think a little bit more outside of because it you know you are forced to when you're just. I, I don't know if I'm explaining it myself. Yeah, you are, because right, you're already used to being in a shitty, in a like in a rough environment. Right. So you're like, and oh, then I you're under pressure, so you know how you're more confident to make that decision, and it's not going to be a bad one. And if it's a bad one, who cares? I'm being in a bad one plenty of times. Right. I'm right back where I've always right. thought I was anyway. Right. Um, what about like if you get into a crash? What do you do? Do you like um, close your eyes? Do you keep or what do you do? Like, so. Um, <laughs> It's it's human nature. You 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 definitely close your eyes. You're not gonna go. All right, let let, let, let me watch where I'm gonna go. Oh, that's cool. That's a wall. <laughs> you just I we usually the first thing you do you take your hands off the steering wheel because it yanks. And actually, I have a I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a pretty big oh, scar. Oh yeah, I can see that easily, dude. I didn't take my hand off the steering wheel. And the wheel came in and and broke my arm, it hit my elbow, and I and broke seven of my ribs and knocked myself out. I was in a coma for two days, but. <laughs> In a, in a race? In a race in wow. Detroit, yeah. And did you, you just were driving and then it happened, you got knocked out? It was a it was a long corner, wrong right-hand corner, and we we're racing on the streets. And we had a manhole that actually, the the car prior to mine, a few seconds ahead of me, 
went and actually just level and brought it up a little bit and oh. our cars are solo and I was the next car and then took off and landed no brakes at 180 miles an hour into the wall. Wow. That's all I remember. I mean, I don't. Somebody told me that. And do you remember coming back, like just waking up later? I mean, what? So I remember. That's so sick, so dude. First this of is, all. I'm telling you what they told me, but what I remember is I woke up two days later. So basically, I had no idea. Where, and my arm was hanging because they just had surgery. I had two plates, 14 screws, and it was hanging because of the swelling. So, so, and I opened my eyes, and that's all I remember. I had my arm up there, and I'm like, what the hell? Where am I? Yeah, like you're probably in class or something. Yeah, I was like, uh, am I in heaven or something? Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> excuse me, excuse, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> so when you like, <clears throat> are there different things that you have to do for your body to take care of yourself for this type of sport? And how has that changed since when you got started? Like, are people physically doing things different? A hundred percent. Really? Well, you think about it, right? So racing hasn't been, for the longest time, people didn't think it was we were athletes because, well, you're driving a car. Right. That can't be that hard, right? Right. I mean, if, if you hadn't driven, yeah, you're just trying to stay away from your Today, you go, I get in my car, put my seatbelt on, power steering. So it wasn't very common between drivers to work out because you didn't need to. Like the cars were easier to drive. And then, you know, with evolution, technology, and they becoming, you're talking about 240 miles an hour. The thing is, pull three Gs into the corner. You saw it today, how much you're sweating on that suit. Oh, yeah. So, but it was not a specific training for it because it was something new. Like, you know, basketball players, what do they do? They play basketball all day. And then, yeah, they go to the gym to try to improve a couple. So for us, it was more was a developing, like, okay, what do we need? We need core. Then we need neck, you need shoulders, and you need forearms. So, and then you start developing, you know, and talking to experts, and you say, okay, what what can I do? And nowadays, I mean, I'm 47. Really, it's not very Young. common to to last this long. I mean, you talk about any in any top high level sport. Talk about Tom Brady. He's old. I'm old, but we took we we took care of each other like of ourselves and and. You know, you're lasting that long because you're still fit, you're still sharp. But today, I think the biggest improvement for us, like you have a lot of reflex machines and stuff that you can train your eyes. Like first time somebody told me, you know, you can train your eyes. I'm like, hey, stop, man. Come on. It's like telling, yeah. me, telling me my no my dog needs acupuncture. Or I know, yeah, <laughs> I'm just thinking about too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, come on. And and you do. So you have like nowadays we, we go to the gym. Yeah. Um, for the heat as well. So we go do a session in the gym where let's say we go lift weights for 20 minutes. They put you in a freaking hot room in a sauna no, for 20 really? minutes. You come out, you do another drill, come back in because that's, you saw how hot it was. And you come here, I mean, Nashville, street course, 90 degrees outside. You have to sit there for two and a half hours. It's going to be hot. You're going to dehydrate. And we train to drink as little as possible because in a race car, you're not, Oh, let me drink at 200 miles now. You don't want to like, and there is not enough space to have a drink bottle. You have a little tube that you can have, maybe less than half a gallon on your drink bottle that you can. You need to suck at it. It's like like what what? So, I think and the reflex machine. It's awesome. It's just a flat screen TV. It's a program that you just it will pop a light and you have to cause reflection. But and and you keep. You're getting better at it. And then that's something that, you know, you train your eyes and then it, the overcorrections and you saw like you're always fighting the steering. It's not just a, a drive from your house to the supermarket. So it has improved a lot. And I think uh, since my generation, we have increased the level of of fitness and, and, and sharpness. And then I think like in every other sport, one guy starts doing it and he does well. Everybody's trying to say, oh, I got to imitate. I got to right. do the same he does. And then he brings the level up. And then you just. Do they have, do drivers have to be smart? Is it a smart man's sport? Uh, I don't a think smart woman's smart. Sport? I don't think so. I think we need to be dumb to do what we do, to be honest. Now you strap yourself in a car, very uncomfortable. You go faster than everybody else, but you can die every time you hop in. But you don't think about that. Yeah, no. No offense to us, but. Yeah. 
No, I think I'm actually d- I've the, always the, been pretty close. You know, I'm the not stupider dumb, you are, I'm the neighbor. better. Yeah. Because people like you. Just, so I just told you, I broke my arm, seven ribs, was in a coma. First thing I said when I woke up, the doctor asked, told me because I don't kind of remember. I had a concussion. I said, "When can I get back in the car?" Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister's an idiot, and she's the <laughs> best person I know. She's the best person I know. I mean, I, I, you can't beat that. You know, I love to be here because I can't say things that I probably wouldn't say on a normal. Like you sit down on a podcast, you go, oh, "Well, you know." Yeah, I guess my sponsor is here from American Legion. If I get fired after that, I might need a. What uh, what is your sponsor? What is it? American Legion. Uh, American Legion. Oh, really? It's it's all the veterans, and we're. Oh yeah, I went and saw. You know who I saw at the American Legion play not long ago was um Hank Williams Jr. Wow. Or Hank Williams, yeah, Jr. is the one that's still alive. Yeah. You know, Um, we 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 raced the five hundred of their cars, and it was a really cool cause. We are. You know, we have this campaign, be the one trying to save veterans from, you know, depression and when they come back and try to reintegrate them. And, you know, being veterans, they think they need to defend us and they never would admit they, they're they in depression. They actually, we lose with seven lives a day, 17, 17 a day. Wow. So we've been trying to get the word out. So great sponsor and, and, and a great cause. So. Yeah, it's interesting. Just a lot of the mental health stuff these days is just crazy. Um I don't know what's going on with with humans. It's a weird time to be human. Um, do you feel like y'all's sport is at risk of like automization ever? Does that ever do people ever start talking about that or? Look, there is always talks. Like they talk about what about race cars? Are they all going to be electric? They're not going to make any noise anymore. Or we're going to have robots? We don't need drivers. Uh, I think technology is around, and we're being getting better. I mean, that's. Think about it. That twenty years ago, we thought we'd be flying cars. Now that's right? true. Or we're not. We always think we're going to be doing right. a lot more. Oh, in twenty twenty two, cars are not going to have wheels anymore. You're going to be just like all oh, space shuttles around. So yeah, and all we're doing is ordering pizzas and doing right, dumb right, dances. Right, right. And then, but the, the, the humans are still delivering. It's not yeah. a robot. <laughs> that's true. Maybe yeah. a drone, but you yeah. know what I mean. It's like a guy is still come knocking your door. Hey, yeah. You know what I mean. So no, they I just mean, had a guy. Actually, what's that? They had a guy who. What did that guy do? Trevin, can you look that up? Oh, damn. God put me in a position to save kids in a burning house. This dude. The pizza guy, right? Yeah. He was delivering inside. So, but see, if you had a drone, the drone wouldn't do that. No. Yeah, the drone was just going to The drone was just yeah. drop it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, okay, you're going to have race, car dri- race cars without, ra- without drivers. We this is you you know exactly what I'm gonna say because you're in an, an entertainment business. If nobody watches you, not gonna have a show anymore. Yeah. Anyway, right? If it's a comedy or your podcast, racing is the same thing. Yeah, you're gonna show up to see empty cars. I don't know. I if that happens, I don't think we'll be we'll, we'll be actually be a uh, like frozen. Frozen, somewhere, right? yeah. <laughs> Chronically frozen, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy because yeah, we're about to talk with that guy. But do you think like, because also then, yeah, you're not going to have fans aren't going to want to come watch a rock. I don't know if fans want to go watch my, a My robot. question is like people talk about, you know, there is a lot of debate nowadays about the electric cars, which I think it's awesome. I mean, the environment and everything. But then you talk about racing. Like I said, maybe the next three generations won't know what race cars sound in the past, but we still have enough people. We you go to a race and just, it would be quiet. You can actually talk. It goes, it's like, hey, I think it's weird. Yeah. They do have a couple series that they run, which is awesome, but there is a place for them too. Right. I'm saying, are we going to just vanish everything? It's the, the, the extremes for me, it's what people exaggerate. It's yeah. a great series. They have a couple. They run. It's it's innovative. I think we need that because what people don't realize, racing, it's actually a lab. Everything that you have on your street car, we've been developing for decades. The electric, our stuff. Our engineers are guys that the manufacturers are only involved in racing to make their product better. It's not because of, we love racing. Yeah, I guess we do, <laughs> but what are we getting out of it? Right. right? And it, that's what they do. We develop a traction control. The pedal shifts that you have on your steering wheel, we did that, traction control, the the electric cars. So my point is that is place for everybody. I hate when people say, oh, 
you're not going to be racing with few anymore in 10 years. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, we have the series there that will, and people come watch. Do, right, they can watch both. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you like being quiet, some people go because they don't want to listen to their spouse for damn three hours, <laughs> you know? And that's the truth, true, man. True. I, I can't say that I about think, my wife. Well, no, but I think I can say it and I don't have a wife. <laughs> but I think a lot of people, you know, you see it. You're just like, just a second, honey. And then, it's, yeah. you know, and she'll say, just a second, honey, you but, know? And that's men or women, you know? Um but I, I interrupted you earlier when you were telling me how did you get from so how did you get from the go karts to the next level? So I I was struggling to make ends meet and working. So I was in a go kart track. So to make a little bit more money, I I I was teaching kids how to drive a go kart. So I had a clinic, mm -hmm. and so that I would make some extra money at to, the go kart place. At the go kart place. What was it called? The go kart place? Interlagos. It's in São Ooh. Paulo. It's one of the most famous race tracks. I actually just raced there Sunday. To, that's last week. In a go-kart? No, no, in a stock car. In a stock I, car. I'm doing stock car Brazil as well this year, as, apart from wow. Indy cars. So been traveling Crazy. quite a bit. And granted, man, back in the day, uh, we didn't have cell phones. So I was down at the go-kart track, and the guy that used to prepare my go-karts, my mechanic, comes down. The race shops are always near a racetrack. That's very common. Indianapolis, all the shops are there. He walked down and says, hey, uh, somebody's on the phone. With, for you up, I'm like, dude, I'm working. She says, no, no. So it was a guy called Nelson Piquet, which is a, one of the biggest, most famous race car drivers in Brazil. I'm like, so I'm very well known for pranking people. So I'm like, it's one of my friends that are screwing with me. So whatever. So I go up and he says, hey, uh, it's Nelson. I'm like, come on, man, who is it? He says, no, no, no. He says, listen, it's me. And this is what, this is the deal. Um, he was very well known. People, that we were very well known for like having good race car drivers in Brazil. I have a, a, a friend in Italy that owns a team and he says he wants a Brazilian race car driver. If I knew somebody that was good, it was you. So you have to go to Italy. It was Friday. You have to go to Italy tonight. I'm like, dude, okay, great. I can have, like, I used to take two uh, public buses to go to work and come back. I'm like, I barely have the money to take a public transportation. And had you been practicing driving actual? Was this for? This is for. Um, this is for cars. Cars. Yeah, I, but I was actually racing cars in Brazil for a small series and doing go karts. So okay. I was already driving cars. So I said, "All right." So I called a couple friends uh, that you know had a little bit more money. I said, Guys, I got this opportunity. Can you help me out? I need to buy a ticket. I don't know. I'll pay you back. Whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. So a, a dad of, so my dad uh, sponsored me and a lot another kid when he was alive. This kid had no money, a lot less money than us. Funny story because then he passed, the situation flipped. And then, so his dad says, no, your 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 father helped us a lot. So I, I'll buy you the ticket to go. Oh, wow. So you get over there. So, but I go there. The test was Saturday and Sunday. I was going to go home Sunday night. I had a ticket. It was a weekend. So I go home. I said, hey, mom, at that point I was 16, but. 17, I didn't have, have to ask permission for anything. I was working. I said, Mom, I'm going to Europe. She's like, hell, how? <laughs> Where did you stole the money to go there? And I explained it, and I left. So I landed Saturday morning, went to the track. They had 10 guys that they're going to choose two drivers. They're doing kind of like a gong show, putting 10 guys together. You would go out to two cars, and they will time it, and they will pick the two fastest guys. So I get there. I didn't speak in Italian, so I was... I didn't know the track. I never had driven the car. So I go out. I do five laps like you did. And I come in and they they check the car. And they go, okay, now you can go and do 10 laps. And we'll check it out. I went out. I did four more laps. And they actually called me in. And, and they said, get out. I'm like, what did I do, man? I'm screw up here. And the guy took me to the truck. I mean, we're trying to talk. I mean, I didn't speak Italian. He says, you're good, you're good, sign, good. So basically, I I think on my four laps, I went half a second quicker than everybody. And he says, no, you're good. And he was looking for a Brazilian. Damn, you must have been good, man. So he's like, you hired. I said, okay, so when can I go? So I'm going to go home tomorrow. That was Sunday. And then when do I go back? He goes, no, you, you can't go home. I'm like, Okay. You're Italian now. Then he goes, we're going to hire you, but I can't pay you. All I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a car to race for free. I said, well, I don't have any money. He's like, well, so I, well, then I can't stay here. I don't have, I can't 
rent a house or yeah, can't just drive around all night. So he goes, well, no, okay, we'll, we'll take care of it. So like you, you figure out how you're gonna find a way to have whatever, a little bit of money. But you're gonna, you can. We have the race shop. You can leave in the race shop. This is my office. We're gonna put a mattress there every morning when I come here at eight. That mattress needs to be out and mm. clean because I'm gonna. This is my office. This is a TV. And I was underage, so the shop was in a remote area of the city in Milan. It says, at 6 o'clock, we're going to lock you in. You have a phone. If you're in trouble, you call. At 7 a.m., we open up, and you can and you work on the cars during the day. I said, all right. Jeepers. So I did that for three years. Wow. And we won a championship. And then at the end of 95, that's actually a, a funny story that I like to tell my kids that and people that, like, we talk about racing a lot that I start racing not because of the money. And same to you. You said I start you start your career because you enjoy what you do. Yeah. Um at the end of ninety five, I was making a thousand dollars a month. Leaving for free. It's a lot of money. You have no bills, man. I had no yeah. phone, no car. Ninety five is good. Right? So I get uh a call from a manufacturer in Italy saying, Hey, uh, can you come talk to us? I said, Sure. I was racing a, an open wheel car called Formula 3. And they invite me to this. Look, this is a contract for half a million dollars. Damn. And we're going to give you a house and a car to drive. Apart from, so it was an Audi at the time. And you're going to race the touring cars, which is the normal, like kind of NASCAR, like this, your street car, but converted to like, a race Like what do you car. mean? Like a Dodge Neon or something? Right. Something like that. Like, yes. Just, yeah. So I said, okay. He, said, he says, here's the contract. Take to somebody to look at it if it's okay. It's a two-year deal, so it was a million dollars. Damn, right. bro. I'm you must like, have been geeked up, huh? Dude, I'm like, I actually said, God. where do I sign? I was I was like, there's hey, no lawyers looking tell me. Like, I, where's the pen? I'd have been licking my fucking legs. Right. Tell me if somebody so, gave and, me that. But at the time, I had one sponsor. And it was Philip Morris at the time when the cigarettes were yeah. big and racing. And good. Stuff. But the the CEO was one of like kind of like my mentor, like the guy. He, I mean, he didn't have to sponsor me. I was nobody, and, but he he knew my story. So I called him up and I said, "Hey, I need an advice. This is what what's going on." And I explained to him. He says, "Well, I was about to call you because we, as Philip Morris, we're gonna take five drivers to the to United States." to do a test on Indy Lights. So Indy Lights, it's actually the series before IndyCar. Like you got a, the ladder series. Okay. I was really young and says, and we're going to do a test. And out of those five, we're going to pick two guys and we're going to fund it for two years. And if, and the deal is you learn the first year because you're racing ovals and stuff that we didn't do. And the second year, if you win, we'll take it to IndyCar. Well, IndyCar, my dad, I promise him. I'm like, well, but what about if I'm not, if, if you don't pick me, he goes, well, if the team doesn't pick you, that means you're not good enough. So, And you have to smoke too or no? No, he did not. It doesn't matter. Not at all, which is, it was, Thank it was, God. It was, it was kind of controversial at the time because I was an athlete. So I, I used to go a lot of media training because yeah, at one time I, I sat down to do an interview and the, the reporter says, hey, so your car, you have Marlboro sponsorship, you know, the cowboy stuff. He said, yeah, yeah, they helped me. And he goes, well, how do you feel about inducing people to smoke? I was like, what do you mean? I'm just here doing my job. I'm yeah. not, not telling you. Like, I, I would never, I never did a commercial. But anyway, so it was kind of iffy at the time. Um, with So anyway, back to, he said, well, but that would be your choice. It's It's your own risk. But man, I had like, it's like, Money, I mean, it's a million dollars two years. Up. Like at oh, that time, that would be... I'm like, I'm set for life, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm I do done. two years, I can retire. Yeah. So I went home and, and, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? And I had to make a decision. And, and, you know, at the time, I'm like, well, I'm young. Yeah, money is good, but uh, the promise I made my dad, I'm going to go. So I actually bail on the deal. And I came, so the next day, he bought me a ticket, and I came to America. The December 95, spoke zero English. I actually asked a friend of mine to write it down in a piece of paper, a couple of keywords, like, hello, 
I'm hungry. Where's the bathroom? Yeah. I landed here. I went to Phoenix, Arizona, and I did the test. I was the fastest in the test. I got picked. Me and Castro Neves, which he's racing this weekend, he won four Indy 500. Helio, was it? Helio, name? yes. Yeah, it's cool. Him man. and I, we got picked. We were teammates. I finished second in the first year. I won the championship in 97 in Indy Lights. Then I moved to IndyCar and started to pursue my dream. But but the story, I like to tell the story because I could have actually had gone for the easy, easy money. Right. Easy but I don't think I would have fulfilled my dream and the promise I made my dad. But then on that, probably need to thank him because it's tough to make a decision like that when you're broke. Yeah. Right? Yeah, dude, I wouldn't have made it. I would have taken, I would probably take taken the Yeah, cash. but I think I would. But I love, I, yeah, but it's I would great. have too, but then the only thing that stuck out was my dad wasn't around and that was what I told him what I was going to do, so. Yeah. You think you, your dad's proud of you, you think? I hope so, man. I mean, I, I, you know, I took care. Everything he asked, I've done it. My mother is set. I mean, I first thing I did when I made enough money, I told my mother, from today on, you're never going to work for the rest of your life. You tell me what do you want to do. And if you want to do one thing different every day, you will. And she is very obviously, like, lives a very simple life. She lives in a one-bedroom apartment because she's actually kind of like me when I, I, I'm afraid to get old and become like her. It's like one bedroom so nobody comes to sleep in my house. Yeah, interesting. If they want to come visit me, they can sleep in a hotel, come to my house, Yeah, and then they can leave. You're like right? a cat, man. Right. You're interesting. You know, so, but she does. She lives in Rio de Janeiro, which she goes to the beach every day now. She's yeah. 74. Took care of my sister as much as I could, but my sister is a lot smarter than me and extremely successful in I I want any 500 for him. Everything else, obviously, I have a beautiful family. I have four beautiful kids, and I try to show them as much love and my wife, and, and um, I hope so. I mean, I, I, I do hope so. I'm not perfect, I mean, in any, any ways, but hopefully uh, yeah, he'll be proud of me. And according to you, you'll never will be, you know? I mean, we, we, we people we're like not, us. We're never, no, we're never going to be happy. It's fucking impossible, yeah. Yeah. It yeah, my wife tells me that every day. You're yeah. not. I said, well, just get used to it. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I live my entire life not being happy. I ain't changing it now. And I'm getting older. It's right getting worse. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We bitch more. We complain more. You know. Oh, it's too hot. Oh man, it's too cold. <laughs> it's like, w when are you happy? I'm not. <laughs> it's too something. It's right, always too right, something. Right. 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 Um, wh who's like? Who is it? A, a driver that's just a. F who's like the? F just like. Who's the who's the toughest driver you think you've met out there? It's it's hard. There are so many generations, right? I'm a huge fan. Like I can ask you the same question and what you do. You can right. go thirty years ago to current. So I would say I would pick something in the middle. Okay. Uh, I think the guys that raced prior to us back in the '60s, like we like. Because they burn to death all the time, dude, they? Will they? Die, three of them will die a year. Wow. You lose three drivers a year. Four. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, we don't lose anybody. You crash at 200 miles an hour, you get out of the car, hop in the backup car, and you're racing five minutes later, yeah. right? So I think A.J. Foyt, probably for me, like he worked in his cars. You see a guy who get out of the car and punch people because he was mad. Get a hammer to <laughs> fix something. You don't see that anymore. So those are the tough. You, bring I him mean, up. Let's bring A.J. Foyt up. I want to see him. You know he fought a lion for real. Yeah. No, 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 Theo. No, you guys put just put AJ Foyt lion. <laughs> he went to do a photo shoot with look, the lion attacked him. He was doing a promo what? shoot. <laughs> oh damn. So you tell that. me if this is not a badass. Look at him. Yeah. Let's see that article. Can we get to that article? <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> look at that picture. Hold on, zoom in on that picture. So he's going for his jaw. <laughs> yeah. Look, it looks like he's trying to hug him a little too in the yep. one. Damn, that shit looks so damn. So how many Zoom people in? you saw that fought a lion and survived? <laughs> yeah, look at it. That's crazy. It looks huh? like he's laughing even. Like, it does, yeah. It's like, but he, he, he's, he, I raced for him before I drove for Chip Ganassi. Really? He tell he told me the story. He says, you know, he's he's from Texas. He, I can't. Yeah, you know, I fought a lion. Here you go. You can't yeah. do that. I cannot impersonate him. Yeah. But he says, you know, I was doing a photo shoot and they brought this. He speaks like it's freaking lion. Yeah, I'm looking at the lion. lion. The lion looking at me. 
I didn't think he liked me, but I didn't like him either. Yeah. And then all of a sudden. He was with Stuart Haas. Yeah. yeah. He came at me. And then and I said, but what was his trainer? He says, well, he was trying to get, but like, that's it. <laughs> and a Lions trainer, let's be honest, dude, is just a trainer. You dude, know what the, I'm saying? The trainer knows the Lions. He ain't <laughs> going for him. The Lions is bad. Come on. The trainer is the f- right? the dude who watches the lion yeah, attack somebody. You know somebody. when he's mad. Yeah, <laughs> and if he's mad, what are you going to do? You going to hit him? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Come attack me instead of him. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. my friend. Knock yourself yeah. out. <laughs> Sorry. That's exactly who the trainer is. <laughs> see if you can see an article on that. That's crazy, man. That's unbelievable. Being attacked by. It was such a long time ago that I don't even know. That's beautiful, though, man. You don't get to fight a lion very often. Unless you're doing like a Wizard of Oz and they and, do like and, a boxing he's, thing. He's a, he's a man. I'm telling you, he's one of my heroes because this guy, so he, he was in a bulldozer. He's 70, 70, 74. Okay. And he got attacked by, he was in his bulldozer attacked by bees, more than 300 bees. Damn. And he was by himself and survived. Like he's. He beat them all? Oh, dude, you should see his. I mean, I was. I was you racing see the bees, huh? I was like the poor. And then I said, so AJ, how was this? Stuff? They thought they were gonna fucking kill me, and I kill all of them because when they bite you, they die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah, man. So I mean, he can't, he can't win. Yeah, he just like keep biting me. But boys. like a hardcore dude, but then very hard. Like you drive for him, he will be the one to say, "What are you doing?" You go, "What do you mean? You suck out there." Okay, I'm gonna take you out of the car. I'm gonna put somebody else in. He's that type of person, which I appreciate. Wow, that's powerful, man. That dude's a freaking gangster. He's here this weekend. Is he really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I would like to meet him. Yeah, and like he to won everything. Man. Like, he's the type of person that, like, he drove, car race cars are not the same. Like, not that you drive a NASCAR car, is you're going to be good in an Indy car and vice versa. And he drove all types of cars, and he won in everything he drove. Wow. Like Mario, that old man that drove you around today yeah dude he looks like he still pulls some beautiful women too was huh? he married uh he's he's a widow but yeah i guess he's single now so yeah oh he's, he's a widow yeah. now. Yeah. damn or male widow huh right i don't know what that's called um what else was i gonna ask you about oh uh the uh so what keeps you in it now because you're um i mean you're in your 40s now what keeps you in racing You've won the Indy 500. You've kind of achieved right. your, like, is it, you got close last time. I mean, is it like. It was, the, it's, it's, it's addicting, to be honest. Like, you know, like, I think you will relate to that because you were very successful in what you do. So, but you could say, why you keep doing it, right? It's that adrenaline, then you're going to go. Like the same way, I believe I've never actually, obviously we do speeches and stuff in front of people. But I don't get the crowd reaction. Like we don't hear them. So to me, it doesn't affect me at all. They can be booing me. I could care less. I can't hear you. But you know that moment before you get on stage that you get that butterfly in your stomach? That That's what keeps, that's what it is. It's not, it, yeah, it's the speed. It's But that those kind of things, I'm used to it already, right? So you used to make people laugh. You used to talk to people. You, you get, you know how to ask the right question. But it's like, it's the feeling of, when you when I get in a car, it's my moment. Like it's it's me in the car. It's me and the beast, and like we're gonna go beat everybody. Doesn't necessarily happen all the time, but yeah, I think the adrenaline and and you know I've been doing this all my life. I think the toughest part is to realize. I I, I said that the other day. My biggest fear because I think I'm still competitive, and not because I think that my results are still telling. Right, I am because that's that's our life too. Doesn't matter how old you are, but you have a couple bad years. That's it. That's it. Because you have to perform. It's a performance based sport. Right. If Tom Brady had had the past two seasons weren't good, he wouldn't be playing this season. Yeah, and he wouldn't be coming back. But that's the toughest decision. It's to let it go when you still think you have it. Right. And until the day that something overcomes that, because it's a very selfish. And you know that too, because I mean, anybody can relate to that when you dedicate your life to what you do. Everything else comes second. Yeah. My wife, my kids, 
like my wife asked me the other day, which she knows very well because she she worked in racing, so she knows. But did you ever think about that something could happen to you? What about us? I said, I do, but I don't. Because I still want to do this, and I hope you guys understand that. And I'm, But then she says, no, I'm not asking for us. I said, what about you? Are you fine with that? I said, I am. And I think the day that I'm not, that will be the day that I think I need to say, all right, now I'm done. Mm. And I'm not ready for that yet. I mean, we just finished third in the biggest race in the world. We had a chance to win. I want to do it again. And then there's a, a bunch of annoying people saying, when are you going to retire? Said, Why should I? Yeah. Was was I that last? Yeah. yeah. Was I that bad? <laughs> yeah. I thought I was bad, but I thought, but I have that opinion all the time about me. Yeah. Right? So it's a tough call, man. It's a tough call. And, and you know, you think about out of my four kids, I, I wasn't there for two of them on the day of their birth. Wow. And you miss many things. Right? Oh, you miss many things. My, I, my, I, my girl went back today. It's her first day at school. I'm here with you. Yeah. Am I sad? I hate to say it, but I'm not. I mean, that's our life. And that's the way I chose to live mine. I mean, I give them the love that I can and as much as I can and as much as I want. But, it, but the, the, it's a very selfish it is. thing. And it's not even selfish to you. It's selfish to you, but it's the requirement of the job is a lot. Right. Because it's not people think that whatever we're doing here, you just sat here right now, we talked and we're done. What about the studio? What about the preparation? The thought that you had to put in, who am I? You're going to talk to me. And the same thing with me. I go home. I got to wake up and, and work out. It's not just, yeah, the race car. The easiest part is to drive the race car. Yeah. But what about go to the race shop, talk to the engineers, dedicate yourself, look at it. It's, it's a full-time job. It's not just, yeah, you guys have the best life, right? I mean, this is my 14th weekend in a row that I spend in a racetrack. Wow. So the entire summer, we didn't go on vacation, which I understand a lot of people don't either. But I'm saying, like, it takes your entire time. And in the meantime, you have kids to raise, you have soccer games to take them or basketball, whatever. But then you just try to make it the best. But like I said, to answer your question, what makes it, it's the selfness, selfness, selfishness, selfishness, sorry, Brazilians, but and selfness yeah yeah and 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 the yeah, it, it's interesting it's a selfish life it's a very selfish life everything needs to go it needs to actually rotate around you or me right oh uh, we need to go well, i want to take the kids to disney when uh next weekend well i can't i'm racing but you can go or right. Can we go? Can we make a plans to go in November? Well, I don't know. The team might ask me to go test because we have a new. Call. We don't. You, you don't have us. You can't have a schedule because you're on call. You're like a doctor. You never yeah. know. You might get lucky. Or you said, "Cool, let's tell the team we're gonna go this week. I'm going away with my kids." TK Theo call. You can be on his show. I mean, I, we've been trying to go to see him. I'm a fan. Honey, I, I gotta leave. Yeah. How about, well, you guys can stay, and then you leave. I know. Yeah, my whole life's been like that, I think, doing things that. And it's hard to find people that understand that because then it becomes, so you don't want to actually share your life with me? No, I do, but. But. Right, but, yeah. But it's my life. I know. Yeah, I'm hard to reach sometimes, man, I think, in a lot of, in a, like, a lot of, like, communication ways and stuff. Like when it comes to relationships and stuff, it's really, you know, Theo. But I think at the end of the day, like I, I'm on my second marriage. Uh, my my first wife, which is the mother of my oldest kid, a great person, but she she was a normal girl, like normal girl. I mean, she got brought and raised, lived with her parents until she got married. Um, never actually watched racing and stuff, and she couldn't she couldn't do it, and I couldn't do it because then I couldn't do it more of her requiring and asking me all that it was a lot of pressure yeah and then i get my wife that i've been with, with lauren for 15 years she was a reporter she had a tv show all about racing and cars she but, gets it more well she knows yeah and then it, it becomes like we'll do whatever he needs to do and then in our relationship again it could be flipped the other way if she 
she had a, a, a much bigger dream. Probably I would give up mine at some point and leave hers too. But in a relationship, somebody's going to have to give up. And I'm not trying to say, oh, I'm the man. No, but she met me. I was already who I am. Right. You know? And I think the same with you. Like either right. they yeah. get used to it or then it's not for you. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, not the man. best to give you like relationship advices. But no, I, I don't think I would. I, I, but I feel like, yeah, it's the same it's kind of stuff. It's like, man. It's hard to find somebody to fit into it, you know. And, and that understands, right? Because you never have a schedule. And that's a, for some people, it's a problem because you can say, all right, well, you know, tonight we're doing this, 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 this. Then you have all these plans and you get a phone call, hey, you got to go to LA right now because. Yeah, or something changes. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you got to prepare sorry, for yeah, something. Tell this yeah. Problem, oh, I'm going. Yeah, sometimes you can. It's, at some point in your life, you will be able to say no. But even then, I think you're gonna think about it because oh, but it's still, still a good opportunity there. You know, it's a movie or like, oh, my man, come on. I mean, if my boss calls me and says you need to be in Pittsburgh tomorrow, I'm not gonna tell. Oh, well, yeah, you know, my girl has a. Because, yeah, you're gonna put on a Steelers right. jersey and freaking hit the airport. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. What time? Yeah. <laughs> so, what time do you need me there? Yeah. What time? Yeah. I got six see. great yeah. watches. What are you doing? What are you doing? When he calls, it, his favorite word, right? He's like, hey. What are you doing? I said, <laughs> whatever you need me to do, boss. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to do? No, no, no. I'm asking you, what are you doing? I said, waiting for you to tell me what to do. <laughs> have they tried Have they tried any like advanced, like alternate types of racing or things to get the sport different or more, ex not more exciting, but to add variation to it? Or have there been like- We do it all the time. Really? I mean- it's it's no different that you know the fans are the hardcore fans will be critics they're the worst critics and you're never gonna please everybody but the best way we try to make in the car is that everybody that actually is gonna they, they feel the car they will have a chance to win the race some series that is only two teams that dominate and then that gets really boring it's get it's awesome for the two teams that are dominating but so we try to keep the competition level side, which is hard to control, but with the equipment and the cars and the engines, you give them rules to keep the cars closed. So then you take the best out of the driver, the engineers, and obviously there's always gonna be, the teams that are well-funded, they have the funding to hire better people. Right, it's like baseball. Right, and that's that's like, like anywhere in the world, but the way they're making, so we're making adjustments all the time. And, and you talk about not just on the equipment, but how the way we race. Uh, I mean, look at the challenge here in Nashville. We're, we have a street course. It's 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 a street. You just built around it. Yeah. And I you know, know if it's going to be good. Yeah. Like, what do you, so we did the first year. Some places are bad. Then you come back and you make it better. Uh, we shouldn't start the race at this point because a lot of people crash. You should start it over there. So it's constant. I mean, it's it's a, it's a tough job, you know. But that's what we do to equalize, and then it's easier to sell sponsorship because when you go sell your sponsorship, it, the, the 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 trickiest question because it's like, let's say, I want to buy your drink. I said, how much is that, Theo? He said, five bucks. I said, here, five bucks, and I'll get it. And I drink it. That's good. A sponsor will ask you, how much is a season to win? Well, that's not a question. Because if you can give me the biggest budget, but that's still not guaranteed, I'm going to win. So it's never, it's a risk. So the season costs X million dollars. Well, costs $5 million. What about if I give you 10? Are we going to lap I mean, the entire field? No. Or what about 15? No. And we'll probably lose to a team that had $2 million budget. So it's, it's never, it's never guaranteed. So you're kind of like trying to, so... The way the series is, you can actually say, "All right, well, we don't we don't have that budget, but we're still very competitive." And then you have a chance to show off and be on TV and have a good result to give the return to your sponsor. So we're making changes pretty much like every year. There are new, different rules, and and you're trying to improve every race. Is it different being in um in your in uh in IndyCar and in NASCAR? Are they two different worlds, kind of? Completely different. I mean, I've never raced NASCAR, but our team owner has a team. I have a lot of friends, uh, Tony. I mean, I know Tony well and Clint. Uh, 
it's two different, completely different mentalities. Uh, the way they run things, the cars are not similar. They run more of a raw, old school. They're getting like more and more advanced, but we're technology wise, we're I don't know. 15, in the future, fifteen years ahead of them. Damn, but that's, boy. But that's not because they're not they capable. That's it. the way they choose. The way yeah. they want it. That's the product, and it works. Yeah. Because then we don't even compete. Like there is no competition. Right. I mean, they go at one hundred sixty miles an hour, one hundred eighty tops. We do two forty. Yeah. They corner at one hundred twenty. We corner at two thirty. Damn. You know so. But yeah, there is huge difference, and 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 the fan base as well, because then you go from the guy that likes electric cars or open wheel or NASCAR. Interesting, man. I think I've learned a lot. You know, I've learned uh, a lot about you, and I've learned a lot about the the sport overall. Um, I think there's probably more stuff about the sport that I could learn, but I think I just have to get out there and experience it more. I I, I think uh, you got probably the best shot as far as you know experiencing something that. You know, it's like you, you've been on a car now. So you probably, you would relate a lot more than if I just had sat here and tell you, you know, you go to the roller coaster. Now, now you know exactly what we're talking about. You talk about you have a you have a wheel that has, it costs 50 grand, just a wheel. And you have 15 buttons that you have to change them four or five times a lap. Why are you going 230 miles an hour? Why are you having cars all around? Why you have to look for, because, you know, that, that's another thing that people don't realize. When you're going that fast, you're not looking what's happening here. You're looking what's happening, like, way ahead of you. So, yeah, I think you have, a, I mean, hopefully hopefully you enjoyed it and you have a different appreciation for what what we feel. Well, I certainly have a, a, a pr appreciation for you now. And I have, a, I think I have a better appreciation just being in the car and um, just kind of seeing what that's like. You know, it's just amazing. We'd come up on a turn. I'd be like, I don't know if we're going to be okay for this. Yeah, we, what was And then we would just. <laughs> you know, we do, we have the same thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we have a little bit more of notion yeah. that it's going to be okay. But yeah. sometimes it's like, oh, that's not going to be okay. When can you even pass someone? I didn't see any opportunities. So, yeah. I mean, you, it's a setup, man. It's, it's a cat and mouse game. Sometimes, like in this type of track, there's probably one place to pass, but the, but sometimes that your car is not as good at that place. So what you do, you force the guy to make a mistake. Mm. You put enough pressure on him until he pops. And that's when it comes in back to whatever we've been talking for an hour now, the pressure, the guy that can take it. And it's just really, it, it is like that. And then you're relying on a team too because we do pit stops, right? We change four tires and we put 20... 20 gallons of fuel in eight seconds. But then when you put that, those eight seconds, when you come into the pits, that the entire field of 26 cars that we have, it pro probably going to be in one and a half seconds from first to last. Wow. If you come in and the guy has an eight second pit stop and you have a 10 because somebody made a mistake. And you lost. Hey, you go from first to last. And then a place that you can't pass, you're done. So there's so many other things that are out of your control as well that I have to go right. That is, it's actually it's brutal. You know what I mean? Because to win, it's brutal. Well, to well win. because it's like in any other sport, some of the other sports, if you don't win, it because you suck, because you suck. You can't shoot the ball. Right. It's on you. Yeah. Right. Well, I can't make the basketball. I can't hit the baseball. But that's on you. You need to go there and pre us. You can be the best guy out there. If you don't have a team behind you, you're done. There's can't a lot of make, factors. Right. And on top of that, you have the best team, but the manufacturer that make the little lug nut, one of those are defective and they break. And then you're like, so it's very, uh, it's unfair. It's like life, man. Yep. A hundred percent. And we're never happy. We're never happy, man. Life's unfair. And so is that sport. Um, Tony, thanks so much for your time, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Really, yeah. really thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm a, I'm a fan, and uh, you know it's it's a pleasure to be here. That's the same way that I feel, man. And I, I look forward. I'm going to come out to the IndyCar in uh, in May, next May. So I'll be uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll be my. Uh, we're working on it, putting a lot get of pressure there, on the dude. people behind the scenes. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be my 25th year, and wow. I if you really serious and you have the time. You'll be my guest, and I I promise you, you're going to experience something that you never did with. 
400,000 people in that place. I'll give you a radio. You can listen to the conversations yeah. during the race. Yeah, be sick. I'll definitely make it. And man. I have to say, it, it might be my next one, my last one. So you'll probably be there for the good farewell. The chow, and then, huh? And then we can go party Sunday night. Yeah. The way I say it, we can go drink to celebrate or to forget. Go get you a third <laughs> wife, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Stop it. I'm joking. No, no. I'm joking, miss. We'll get you a wife. Yeah, oh, there we go. She has some friends. She does? Yes, yeah, she I does. I want a Brazilian wife, too. Well, she's not Brazilian. She's American, but I have a lot of Brazilian friends. So, Yeah. Are my, you sure you want that? Yeah, I think so. My friends married a Brazilian lady, and she seemed like a great lady. All right. Well, I'll, uh, so. I'll, I'll send you some... Uh, yeah, send some me friends. Some, send me some T Maya, some T Maya, <laughs> right, 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 right. so I can play it for him. Uh, Tony, thank you so much for being Thanks, here. Man. Appreciate it. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh.